Hi everyone and welcome back to Educator.com. I'm Dan Fullerton and today we're going to go through page one of the A-plus physics worksheet on energy levels. And as you do these, it's probably going to be helpful to have a diagram of the energy levels, energy level diagrams for both hydrogen and for mercury. You can find a copy of this worksheet on the A-plus physics site at the video link down below. So, number one. An electron in a mercury atom drops from an, from an energy level I to the ground state by emitting a single photon. This photon has an energy of, well to do this, the energy of our photon is going to be the energy of our initial level minus our final energy level. So I look up on my energy level diagram for mercury and find that the energy level for I is going to be about negative 1.56 eV and that's minus the ground state, which is going to be negative 10.38 eV. Therefore, the energy of that photon, negative 1.56 plus 10.38, comes out to be about 8.82 electron volts. Answer number two. Number two, white light passes through a cloud of cool hydrogen gas and is examined with a spectroscope. The dark lines observed on a bright background are caused by, well that's going to be caused by the absorption of the specific frequencies that allow electrons to jump to higher levels. So that's going to be correct answer number two. The hydrogen absorbing certain frequencies of the white light. Number three, the bright line emission spectrum of an element can best be explained by, well that's going to be caused by electrons falling down from higher states to lower states and emitting a photon of a specific frequency relating to the energy between those energy level transitions. So the correct answer here is going to be one, electrons transitioning between discrete energy levels in the atoms of that element. Number four, explain why a hydrogen atom in the ground state can absorb a 10.2 electron volt photon but cannot absorb an 11, 11 electron volt photon. Well, the key here is atoms can only absorb photons with energies that are exactly equal to the amount that will allow an electron to jump to a higher energy state. So 10.2 electron volts must be the difference between two energy levels that are allowed, where 11 electron volts does not bring you from one energy level completely to another energy level. So I would write something like you can only absorb photons with energy exactly equal to the difference in allowed energy levels. All right, let's move on to number five. Excited hydrogen atoms are all in the n equals 3 state. How many different photon energies could be emitted as these atoms return to the ground state? Well, if we've got the third level, second level, and the n equals 1 level, an electron could fall from 3 to 2, so there's one possible photon energy. It could fall from 2 to 1, there's another possible photon energy, and it could fall all the way from 3 to 1 in one shot. So I would say we have three different potential photon energies. Correct answer there, three. Number six, how much energy is required to move an electron in a mercury atom from the ground state to energy level H? So we're gonna need the energy level diagram for mercury to do this one. And to do that, remember the energy of a photon is its initial minus its final energy levels, so that's going to be negative 1.57 minus negative 10.38, which is going to be equal to about 8.81 electron volts. And I did those backwards because we're starting at the ground state but going up, and it's absorbing that photon in order to move to energy level H. 8.81 eV, answer number two. Number seven, an electron in a hydrogen atom drops from the n equals three energy level to the n equals two energy level. What's the energy in electron volts of the emitted photon? So we're gonna need the hydrogen energy level diagram here. The energy of our photon is the initial minus the final energy level, 
which is negative 1.51 eV at the n equals 3, and it's 3, negative 3.4 eV at the n equals 2. So that's going to give us 1.89 electron volts. Number 8 says, what's the energy in joules of that emitted photon? So we're going to take 1.89 electron volts, and we need to convert that into joules. So if I want electron volts to go away, I put that in the denominator. I want joules, I put that in the numerator. And I know 1 electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. My electron volts will make a ratio of 1. Therefore, I'm going to be left with 1.89 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 units joules which will give us 3.02 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. On to number 9. An electron in the hydrogen energy atom, hydrogen atom drops from n equals 3 to 2. Calculate the frequency of this emitted radiation now. Well, the energy is hf. Therefore, our frequency is going to be e over h. We just determined our energy was 3.02 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And we have for our uh, h, Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So when I run through that, like my calculator, I come up with the frequency of 4.56 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, two more. Calculate the wavelength of the emitted radiation. Well. Velocity is frequency times wavelength, which implies that wavelength equals velocity over frequency. Our velocity is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by our frequency, 4.56 times 10 to the 14th hertz, gives us a wavelength of about 6.58 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, or 658 nanometers. All right, last problem here. A hydrogen atom with an electron initially in the n equals 2 level is excited until it is in the n equals 4 level. This energy level change occurs because the atom, well, to go from a lower to higher energy level, first off, it must absorb a photon so we can get rid of any of the emitted answers. And to find the energy of that photon, the energy of our photon is going to be its initial level minus the final level, or negative 3.4 eV from the n equals 2 level to negative 0.85 eV from the n equals 4 level, or negative 2.55 eV, where that negative just means that it's absorbing that photon. Correct answer must be number 3. All right, that concludes the first page of this worksheet. If all of that went great, terrific, go ahead and move on. Or if it didn't go so well, now would be a great time to go back and review that section of our lecture. Thanks for your time, and make it a great day, everyone.